Hi guys, today I'm going to give you a small demo of Lua OS version 0.10 and I'm going to start it in VirtualBox with fairly little RAM because it doesn't even need more than that and we have the live CD image mounted which you can download on the website luaos.net so here we go Oh, this is a German version of VirtualBox, so you can learn some German on the fly. Well, this is what it actually looks like if you boot it on a real PC. It is starting Linux, as you can see, because we're basing this on a Linux kernel, which is a very good idea because it gives us hardware support for all kinds of modern hardware devices. It is already detecting uh, the graphics adapter, audio adapter, and so on. Uh, we had a little problem with the Linux version we used first, which was Knopix 6.7. It has some weird problems with the uh, Radeon graphics adapters. They know about it in the forums, but it doesn't look like there's a solution yet. So we just use another version, a slightly older version, Knopix 6.4. And this works great on the machines we tested it on. So, it's booting. This is, of course, not so fast because uh, it's virtualized, but still, it doesn't take that long. Orthogonal persistence, yeah, that is the key word here, one of the key features of Lua OS. It's been something academic before, a uh, topic of research, and now we have it on real working operating systems and this is actually a novelty and uh, as soon as we have more applications for Lua OS you can see that it makes a lot of sense. Um, the start screen also already has to do with uh, persistence because you can continue a session you had uh, started before. All the sessions are locked automatically in Lua OS so if it crashes, if you shut the computer down, whatever, you can always restart the session just where you left off if there aren't any bugs, you know. <laughs> so, some more options, turn it off or upgrade. Well, we're gonna, just going to start it. And we give this session a name. It doesn't matter. Yeah, so now it has started Lua and Java because these are the two technologies it is based on. Java for the GUI, these are Java frames. And Lua for the actual code. And now I'm going to show you how you can uh, write a little code here. Uh, we are going to start the editor. This is a very simple application and it's already written in Lua so it's a standard application. You can see the source code for the editor um, here. It is a few pages of Lua code. Mostly it makes some menus, it doesn't do much. It's all pretty simple, which is a good thing about this operating system. Um, so now we just write a little test application. We connect to the GUI. We're going to introduce some shortcuts for this in the future, so you have to type even less. We connect to some operating service operating system service. It's called GUI. It's the Java GUI. And uh, we send it a simple message. A message box. Hello Lua OS. And that's actually all we have to do. Now we can run this. It asks for a name. We call it Hello World. And it runs and we get this message. Here it says Sandbox 6, because everything that runs in Lua OS is run in sandboxes. It's like processes and other operating systems, but um, we have additional options. You can restrict sandboxes. They can't do anything you don't want them to do. You can assign rights or take them away flexibly for each sandbox. Yeah, so this works. We can go to the Task Manager, which shows us everything that runs here. We have a few system sandboxes, five of them. 
Oh, before I started by the system, file system service, this is a bridge to Java and the editor. And here is our script that just ran. And here we see how many Lua instructions were executed by each of the sandboxes. Well, if we want to clean this up, we click here and our done sandbox goes away. Yeah, and we see that the instruction counter goes up slowly. It does some stuff to update this task manager and everything. So, we uh, add a little to this example to show you some more things. We might just uh, open a frame. Why not? It's also very easy. We give it a name. Our first frame. And we have to do something here. We have to tell the system that uh, the sandbox should stay alive as long as there's a frame. We might get rid of this in a future version. It can be done automatically. Otherwise, the frame would just be closed again. This is a frame we just created. It is uh, simple, not much in it. We put some stuff in it. We make a button. This is a button. And we put it there. And we run it. Yeah, it's huge because by default the component you put in is put in, you know, to cover the whole frame. <laughs> Clicking it does nothing, but that is something we can change easily. This is, you see a mixture of Java and Lua here. An action listener is a Java concept, but actually we make an action listener. Uh, I have to concentrate here which is Lua code. So when the button is clicked, we run some Lua code. Java and Lua in a happy marriage, which is rare as usual marriages in real life are not that happy. So this is a piece of a better world. The you clicked. Oh, this is an English keyboard. I have to adapt. You clicked the button, friend. And start this. Typos? No, no typos. And there we go. Yeah, that's how easy it is to write some code in Lua OS. I might show you one of two more functions. For example, the logging and replay, my session, whatever, start a new session, and we start some things. This is a browser for examples. Oh, it asks us if some measured method should be called. We should add this to the list of allowed methods. There's a list of methods in Java that can be called for safety reasons or cannot be called. This is all designed for safety. So, and now we run some of the examples, like a little frame here. So, it does nothing interesting. And if we now reboot the system, you can just use a quick reboot and click on this then it should give us yeah, the same situation we had before. Here it is. Oh, there are two frames. That's interesting. Did we just make two of them or one? <laughs> there might be a little bug. But we're still working on this persistent thing. One or two things are a little sketchy. But overall, it really does work. And the concept, I can assure you, is sound. <laughs> It's all been well thought out. All these sandboxes are running. Uh, they are persisted. And with all the code, all the data, everything with their output, with all the states they are in. And this is really a great feature. Uh, I've been looking for this for a long time in operating systems, and they did not have it. It's a bit like the hibernation in Windows. It's more flexible. You have multiple sessions. It's faster. You don't need to uh, 
save anything manually it just saves all the time every second all the time it doesn't even take any computing power yeah there are many 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 more things that can be done with Lua OS for example you could um, share code with people mobile code as they call it you could uh, run your code on somebody else's machine safely as soon as we plug all the holes <laughs> as we do the auditing and uh, we fix the system so it's really secure it's just a little work it can be done because the concept is sound as I said as soon as we do that we can have uh, computing servers on the net you can let other people run code in your computer you can even see what they run there and you can share your computing powers it's like a cloud service just it's not commercial and the cloud people own everything but the people own everything so this is a revolutionary OS I really must say in many ways our script should appear here actually yeah our new script hello world it's a fantastic script yeah and when we're done we can shut it down right from here what we can also do is uh, go to Linux um, because this is based on Linux, uh, on Linux or Knopix and um, you might want to do things here like configure your network or stuff um, we leave this option here we don't want to hide that Linux is behind it uh, because there's a lot of useful things in Linux of course and we have this option here to install Lua OS to the hard disk it uses the standard Knopix installer which is very good I've seen a few of these Linux installers it's very good it asks you a couple questions and then you're done and partitioning is easy everything is easy it doesn't even take long and then you have a new partition with Lua OS anything else I want to show you oh yeah the upgrade let's just quickly look at, look at the upgrade check for OS upgrades right now we have the latest version so it doesn't really upgrade to anything but you can do it anyway to see how it works so it downloads from Lua OS oh there's a bug huh. there's a bug I should have done that <laughs> this is so embarrassing yeah let's say that uh, usually this works I've seen it work I swear <laughs> Let's try it again. Does it work now? Yeah, this time. No. No, there's a bug. There's a bug. I admit there's a bug. Yeah, we are working on things. Anyway, we're going to turn this off now. Thank you for watching. And I hope you aren't turned off by the little bug too much. Thank you. Goodbye.